Hey all, Tom Moran here from Tom's Big Spiders. In this episode, we're going to be taking a look at Brachypelma smithy. I have two juveniles that I got back about a year and a half, two years ago that are in need of rehousing. So we're going to go ahead and do the rehousing here and then take a look at their husbandry and care. Now, Brachypelma smithy is a very popular terrestrial tarantula from Mexico. Adults get to be about seven and a half inches or so. They are usually very docile once they are full grown, but heads up, the slings and juveniles can be a bit skittish. And this is also a species that many consider to be a hobby staple. I know the first species of tarantula I ever saw in real life was a Mexican red knee and obviously had a fairly profound effect on me because here we are years later surrounded in a room full of tarantulas. So for many, this was the one that started it all. So enough of me talking. Let's go rehouse and take a look at the husbandry and care for Brachypelma smithy or the Mexican red knee. All right, so this is going to be a quick re... Well, we'll see. It should be a quick rehouse of two Brachypelma smithies. I got these way back, and I believe in the fall of 2018. Unfortunately, I didn't write down when I got them. I think I got a big order in and forgot to write it down. Anyway, it was around that time period, and at the time, they were very well-started slings. These guys can be super teeny tiny as second and third instar slings, but they were probably about an inch or so. And this is normally a very slow-growing species. I have a Brachypelma hemorrhoi, 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 right? That I've had for years. It has only molted like three times in my care. She's gone from about three inches to maybe four inches in that time period. And these guys are very closely related to them. But mine have been growing a little bit more quickly. It seems like once they hit, especially the Brachypelma species and the Gramostola species for that matter, once they hit the one inch mark, you start getting a lot more growth, but it can take a while to get them to that point. So here I have them in these cylinders. I will probably not include a link to these because I did not buy them online. I don't know where you get them from. I think people want to chime in with links or whatever but I were, was given these. So what we had her when she was a little one inch sling, we put her in here. We had the cork bark hide. We had the water dish, which she keeps covering up. I plucked one out of here earlier because we're going to do a rehousing. And as you can see, she just molted. So her color should be really nice. So hopefully Billy can get some nice shots of her. Um, of course, she's going to hide under the plant. Now, as you could see by the footage earlier, I am wearing gloves. That's because these guys love to kick hairs. This is one of those species that people talk about being very handleable. And I think what happens is, yes, as adults, the adults can be rather laid back. And there she goes. But as juveniles, I have found they are very skittish and very quick to kick hairs. So unfortunately, I've had people that have picked these species up. They're like, I got to be smithy. It's a beautiful juvenile. And I keep trying to hold it and it keeps kicking hairs on me. Well, that means it doesn't want to be held. So let's go ahead and try to put it in here. Without her skittering out. There we go. Yeah, there's the hairs. And then I'll tell what I got in here. Hopefully, she has, if she comes out, I'll be able to wrangle her. Yeah, she's, um, oh, no, that's not on it. the agenda. There we go. So the container is a Systema 1830 Clip-It food storage container. It's about 9 inches by 7 inches by about 5 inches. So 9 by 7 by... It says four point. I think it counts the height of the thing. I love these for juvenile terrestrials. They work really well. I've used these for a lot of species. They are milky, like a lot of the Sterilite containers, unfortunately, but they're very easy to drill through to add the ventilation holes. They work great for those juvenile species. I wouldn't use them for something that's a heavy Weber, say, or something wants to burrow, but for terrestrials, they work great. And they're stackable, which means I can put them, usually I have them on shelves where they're like three deep and makes it very convenient when you have a lot of juveniles. Again, I don't usually spend a lot of money on juvenile enclosures because most of them don't spend all that much time in those enclosures in the first place. I'd rather wait and spend good money on adult enclosures. So what we have here is BioDude substrate, but any cocoa fiber, uh, peat, although I've moved away from using peat, I know a lot of people still use it. Uh, what else have we got? Topsoil, mixes will work fine. I know there's a lot out there saying that they need to be kept bone dry. Yes, as adults, they can be kept dry with a water dish, but I found that slings need a little moisture. And my juveniles, I always make sure I give them a little moisture. And I have noticed every once in a while, I will moisten up a corner of this. I'll fill the water dish, let it roll over, and I will find the spider sometimes on the hot days hovering over it, which tells me it likes a little of that moisture. But they will, as one this size, could probably deal with it dry as long as there's a water dish. And she will be getting a water dish as soon as we stop filming. As a matter of fact, I might give her a water dish now because I'm afraid people think I'm full of poo. Little water dish in there. 
Was it ASMR? Was it <laughs> <laughs> there we go. That's for our ASMR folks. I think that's what I probably got it completely wrong. All right, so there's one down. This is the one that just molted, and she has eaten once. I want to make sure. I always, well, I have people ask me when to rehouse, if they have to rehouse, how long should they wait after molt. I always make sure they get at least a good meal in them before I move them, because sometimes it can take them a little while to settle in, and you don't want a spider that just molted, has no real energy stores, and is not eating. So we got the second one here. Oh, this is the one that's a pain in the butt to open. <laughs> uh, yeah, so anybody that was about to look these up online, most of them are good. And I did do a thing where you, there we go. When you get these, I would encourage you, if you use them, to take the top and keep putting it in. Sit there, put a movie on, and just keep popping the top off. It'll actually loosen them up. I didn't do it with this one, obviously. And she's got hair all over her little bum that she's going to kick all over me. But there she is in there. You can already see where there's uh, some nudeness in the posterior area. I don't even know what that was. All right. Stop kicking at me. There we go. And there oh. we go out. Mm. And I'm glad, no, I'm glad we could see that because I think what happens is, and I'm guilty of it when I do my beginner list. I, I wish I was more clear with it. The beginner list, when you're talking about species that are tractable, you're usually talking about the adults, not necessarily the slings or juveniles. And a lot of people will try to find juveniles as their first because they don't want, they're scared of, intimidated by raising up slings. And what ends up happening is you get a situation like this where they go to hold it and next thing you know what the thing's up their arm. So I'm glad you could see that because people think they're so super slow moving. And yes, adults are generally more calm, but the slings and juveniles can boogie. There you go. No, no, that's not what we're doing. <laughs> not what we're doing. Get in there. Up, up, up. Up, 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 up. Can't see if her legs in there. Get out of here. Stop. No legs? All right. All right, so as far as feeding's concerned, they eat normal size prey. As slings, you may have to pre-kill. I usually pre-kill for mine, especially the little teeny tiny ones. It's sometimes easier than either working with fr flightless fruit flies or trying to find prey items that are small enough for them. As they get to the juvenile stage, they'll eat larger prey, but I have had ones that are a little intimidated if you put something in there that's too big. As adults, no problem, a couple crickets, they're totally good. Uh, did I finish telling what was in here? I don't think I did finish. I think I talked about substrate and somebody got away or something. Anyway, bio do dirt, any type of substrate will really work. I got a cork bark hide. I like to kind of cover it up a little bit, make a little burrow that it can be, a, if it wants to do an opportunistic, some opportunistic burrowing, it can go in there. The moss, I'm gonna be completely honest, is more for looks, except for the fact I will put the water dish over there and I will overflow the water dish when I water her so she'll have a little moist patch if she needs it. And I put some leaf litter in there because it just makes it look really pretty. Now, as far as temperatures, Temperatures in the summertime up here have been usually mid 80s. We get a little 80 to mid 80s. It sometimes gets a little bit above that. In the winter time, it's usually right around 73, 74. But we do have day, days where it gets super cold out, where the heat can't keep up for a bit, and it takes a little while, so it dips down in the 60s. Not for long. Just know that higher temperatures will usually lead to a faster metabolism, will usually lead to faster growth rate. And I have heard people that experience very fast growth rate with Brachypelma, Gramostolas, and Afonapelmas because their homes are naturally in the 80s all year long. So I think that's about it for these guys. I uh, Again, I love the colors. This is kind of, for years, we had one in the hobby that we were calling the B. Smithy that had been the hobby staple for years. Before that, I believe it was Uathless Smithy. And what happened was a couple years ago, I want to say 2018 or so maybe, they figured out that the one that we had in the hobby that we were calling B. Smithy was actually, I'll open this up so you get a little shot of her, was actually B. Homoria, it was already described, and then that B. Anatha, I believe, was the one, is actually the true B. Smithy. And since then, we have gotten true B. Smithies in the hobby. Word of caution, if you're picking one of these up from a vendor, 
Don't immediately assume you got sent the wrong spider. I get a lot of people asking me to identify their spiders because they pick up a juvenile and suddenly they're looking at the juvenile and going, I ordered a B. smithy and I think this is a B. hemorrhoidae. You can't really, they're so difficult to distinguish in the first place. It's really difficult to tell by just looking at a juvenile. I think what happens is some people just get it in their heads that they got sent the wrong spider. Give it a shot, let it grow up, see what it looks like before we start jumping to conclusions because I've had a lot of folks that they just naturally, they put a picture of it up, people don't know what size it is. They think it's an adult. They go, oh, nope, that's not a smithy. That's a Moria. You got you know, screwed out of money. And then next thing you know, it, you're, they're emailing people to ask what species they got. Just let's give the people some credit they're getting. Usually if they're importing them, Mexico controls the species that go out of their country. They're breeding, actively breeding them there. I would like to think that they are sending us the right species and the people that are buying them are getting and selling the right species. If you get an adult later on and you go to do the comparison, you realize that you don't have one, then it's time to complain. But let's not jump to conclusions on slings and juveniles. So there we go. Brocky, Pelma, Smithy, the true Smithy. Not the one that was in movies all those years. Apparently that was actually Hemorii. But just know either one of them, if you can't find one, they're so similar in appearance that most people have trouble telling the difference. So if you can find one over the other, grab it. So again, it bears repeating, although this species shows up on the majority of beginner species lists, and for good reason, because adults are rather laid back and usually won't kick hairs, those juveniles can be quite rambunctious. Mine, I've all gone through a stage where they kick hairs. Now, I'm sure there's folks out there that have very laid back juveniles, but I've also heard of many, many people over the course of years that picked this spider up thinking they were going to get something that they could handle, and then found they had a little wild man or woman on their hands that would run around the enclosure when disturbed and leave a cloud of hairs in its wake. So that's something I think people need to be a little more cautious of when they make beginner species lists, is to let folks know that yes, your adult most likely will be laid back, although there are exceptions, but those juveniles can be quite the handful. You have to figure it this way. In the wild, when they are juveniles and they come out in the open and something comes down on top of them, it's usually not a person who just wants to handle them. It could be something that wants to eat them, whether it be a bird, reptile, mammal, some other type of animal that sees it as a prey item. So that's always important to keep in mind. So that will do it for this one. As always, if you liked it enough to subscribe, very much appreciate it. Click the little circle right on in there. We'll put a couple more videos in here. If you take the time to comment. Know that I will take the time to respond. It just may take a couple days because I tend to get a lot of them and I teach. I'm back in school and I've been very busy lately. That'll do it for this one, guys. As always, stay safe. We'll catch you all next time.